kind of show you the technology of the model itself, the anatomy, um, what it brings over and above our standard saw bones we've been using. Because I do just want to highlight initially the anatomy of the model itself, just to really demonstrate we've got quite a functional ACL, PCL and meniscus in this model right off the get go. And so as I bring this out straight and apply an AP drawer and varus and valgus stress, it moves and feels very much like a functioning knee replacement with a hard endpoint to all those soft tissues. And that's really, really critical. I just heard Andrew talk about having realistic soft tissue graphs and realistic ligaments to demonstrate. Um, up until now, this has kind of been the gold standard outside of cadaveric labs. And the big failing with this is that under that same pressure that I was applying previously, you can see there's no real endpoint to those soft tissues, right? So the gaps just blow out and the graph is no longer realistic. So that's one of the main things that we really like about the FuseTech model uh, here in Australia uh, and about bringing training to the customers at the right time and where it's convenient for them. Um, you can see that I'm here, I'm wearing civilian clothes. Yeah, I could be doing this in a hospital, in a boardroom. I could be quite literally anywhere. So none of the mess and muck that's normally associated with cadaveric specimens. Um, is problematic here. So we can bring training, we can bring education to our customers when and where is appropriate for them. The leg's very easy to manipulate, very easy to dock. The other great thing that I'll show you in a minute is it has the ability to both extend and hyper hyperflex. Um, so very, very straightforward to manipulate the leg, but also very, very realistic. Um, but all the anatomic landmarks, again, very different to a saw bone. They're very prominent, very visible. Um, so it's actually quite straightforward and much more realistic take. Um, and also the feeling that you get when putting these in as you go through the first cortices and then hit that posterior aspect of posterior cortex, very, very lifelike, very realistic to simulate that bicortical fixation that we're looking to get on those pins. Um, this for me, I think, is one of the other great benefits of this technology and of the simulator um, is that as we progress forward, we can have mild varus limbs, um, but we do have the ability, or Mark and his team have the ability to go and print more extreme varus deformities and, and valgus deformities um, to allow us the ability to practice and workshop what those more complex cases look like as well. What we end up there with really is quite a realistic looking balance graph. That would be almost what I would expect to see with a limb that was in four degrees of varus. Um, based off of our default surgical plan. So it ends up being quite a lifelike initial graph and quite a good representation of how to stress that limb to acquire that first graph. Again, very, very different to what it would be like with our conventional bones, whereas you apply a varus or a valgus stress, those numbers just elongate. Um, and again, when we do some sensor tensor work in the next couple of minutes, um, you'll see the big differences there. Getting through that first layer of cortical bone very firm and very firm feel on the saw. And then as we entered that cancellous bone, I could feel the blade going through significantly easier. Uh, always been one of the challenging parts using other saw bones or other models where the ligaments are either fixed rope with no elasticity, um, or as we saw with that model before, rubber bands effectively with no real endpoint. You ended up getting graphs that basically didn't look realistic and didn't, you know, kind of make sense from a knee perspective. Um, whereas with this model, with these soft tissues, I can revert the patella as well. And as we come out, you can see I've corrected already that deformity back to neutral effectively. The saw, you really feel it come up against sort of a harder edge. So you know you've hit that cortical uh, edge. Um, very, very sort of lifelike, very realistic as opposed to that sort of one sensation that you get from those foam compressed models like the sawbones models. And the surgeons haven't had to travel from their regional center to a metropolitan city to, to attend the cadaver lab. We've been able to take the training to them at a time and place that makes sense for them and their lives. They haven't had to travel over a weekend, give up time with family or drop a consulting clinic or an operating clinic um, to learn. And again, this is one of the great things with this particular model um, and with the mechanism, it's really easy to manipulate the leg position to change all the different points that your leg would normally be positioned at to make these different resections.
um, as opposed to the previous sawbone systems where it was kind of just we used to just stick it at 90 degrees and leave it there and then move ourselves around to make it work. So the difference in the blade speed and penetration and how quickly I can cut through the bone as it changes from the cortical rim to that cancellous layer and then back to cortical rim, um, really, really positive feed feedback on the saw as to why that varus and valgus stress at the knee, what I can really see and what's important for our surgeons and for the model is that the gaps that I'm seeing clinically very closely represent what I'm seeing on the graph, right? So if I apply that varus stress, I can see probably, yeah, three or four millimeter gap opening up on that lateral compartment, which is almost exactly what I'm seeing on my graph. And then conversely, on the medial side, it's probably a three millimeter gap opening up there, which is again, almost exactly what I'm seeing on my graph.